So on to, I think, what's going to be the core uh, part of our presentation, wireless as a platform. So what do we mean when we talk about this? Um, we mean that as Meraki Wireless has evolved and scaled as a product, we found ourselves going into richer and richer and co more, more and more complex environments. Customers with higher end needs. Customers, for example, that want to integrate with their back end databases. Customers that want to integrate with their identity management systems. So we're talking large scale enterprise as well as managed service providers and also, and also things like retail. Right? So if you're a retailer and you want to show location based coupons or you want to uh, run email marketing campaigns as you collect email addresses from customers that walk into your stores and you want to run an email marketing campaign. So we've been forced over time to think about not only our core value proposition of simplicity, but how do we build around that and how do we create an ecosystem of tools and services so that partners can build services, partners can build apps, customers can deploy and facilitate more and more complex use cases. Um, so I think this kind of falls into two areas. One is kind of customer engagement in terms of building mobile applications, in terms of captive portal engagement, and the second is more um, enterprise and managed service providers integration. So that's integration with identity management databases, so on and so forth. So uh, here's kind of a visual snapshot of what a kind of more traditional enterprise integration might look like. So if you look at an enterprise infrastructure, you're talking about them having their own network monitoring tools, tools like SolarWinds and Nagios. And yes, they can rely on the Meraki dashboard, but they may want to pull information in into their own existing databases and systems so that they can basically have that single pane of glass with any legacy architectures they have. Identity management um, is, is a very core one. So if you're a large enterprise and you have hundreds and hundreds of IT admins, you don't necessarily want to now manage those IT admins on the Meraki dashboard side. You want to have a central repository, right? Same with corporate databases, same with ticketing systems, right? So if you're a service provider and you want to allow your, your end customer to open up a ticket with you directly as opposed to opening up a support ticket with the Meraki support team, how can we give you tools to white label the platform, right? Especially as we grow in scale. Um, so over time, we've been adding more and more APIs, and we've been evolving this rapidly. So first we started with kind of, the, kind of the industry standard, things like syslog, things like the external captive portal API, which can redirect users and give you certain parameters that you can use to identify access points and users, um, things like uh, real-time location services. But more recently, we've added some kind of more innovative tools like our CMX API, which we'll take a deeper look into, which lets you actually see in real time where people are, as well as SAML for single sign-on. So the idea here is, how do we leverage the Meraki cloud and make it dead simple for you to integrate with your own backend systems and build applications on top? Here's a look at our CMX API. So the CMX API is basically a real-time post from the Meraki cloud of all associated and probing client data. So let's say you're walking by a store or you're walking by this, this office. As long as your device's Wi-Fi chipset is switched on, the Meraki infrastructure can detect those devices and actually perform a real-time HTTPS post of a JSON file to an analytics backend, right? So it's also updated in a geofencing area? I'm sorry, what was that? Is it also updated in a geofencing area within MDM? Uh, right now, we don't have a tie-in of this API to geofencing, but we can explore that in the future if it's useful. Yeah. So uh, previously, up until about a couple of months ago, uh, this real-time API included things like the AP MAC address, client MAC address, RSSI, and timestamp. And we basically opened up to the market and we said, okay, here you go, here's this API, let's see what applications you can build on top of that. And we got a lot of tremendous feedback saying, hey, this API is brilliant, but we would like to see even more data. We would like to get and extract more data so that we can do more with use cases. So what we've done, actually we've been beta testing this, is we've added several parameters to this API based off of feature requests. And we're actually going to be open sourcing um, a sample application that can consume the API that you can use to plot coordinates. Uh, Katie is going to be demoing that. I see Blake uh, smiling over there because he got early access to that API. <laughs> so, the, the, the API extension, you'll see the new format on the right side there, and you'll see that we've added a number of parameters that basically let you extract richer amounts of data. So the client is now associated, will include the IPv4 and IPv6 IP address of that client, um, it, as well as the SSID name of that client. Um, and I think the most exciting thing is you can now start to profile devices based off the manufacturer, based off what operating system that device is running, and also you can engage now in more elaborate use cases based off location. So if you place the access points on Google Maps, we'll include now lat long coordinates of where those clients are. And if you've placed the access points on top of a custom floor plan, we'll also include the XY coordinates. 
Um, and this API is already being beta tested by some large partners, and we've already seen some very cool things being done with it. Things like location-based coupons and services. Things like mobile applications and for, for wayfinding inside a store. In fact, there's a large-scale uh, toy retailer that's doing a nationwide Meraki rollout right now, and they're leveraging this API to build a wayfinding app so that when you walk into the store, you can see where you are and you can basically navigate throughout the store. Um, so that's really, really exciting, um, and we're also releasing that sample web application for consuming the data, um, which I think is going to be very compelling. Um, and I think it kind of, the, the, the philosophy here is um, not only do we want to build more and more APIs, but we want to make it as turnkey <coughs> for you to leverage those APIs and build applications, right? So I think the, the, the platform, the kind of platform play that we're going after now in terms of let's open up more inter interfaces is very exciting. But if you look at the core API itself, it's not, it's not highly differentiated in terms of uh, the actual content that you can get. But the Meraki differentiation comes in in terms of the ease of use of how quickly you can set up the API, right? And this is feedback that we're getting from our customers and partners saying, you know, this is awesome because A, it cuts my time to market in terms of how quickly I can build applications and provide them to customers. And B, it allows me now as a partner, as a value-added uh, reseller or value-added analytics partner to actually uh, POC and trial my application quickly and effectively, right? Um, here's an example of a large-scale retailer in the UK, think 7-Eleven of the UK, basically. Um, and this is fairly exciting. What they're doing is they're extracting data from the API, and then they're overlaying it with data from their point-of-sale system. So the red bars are basically the number of transactions that are happening um, in, this, in this store between certain days. And what they've done is they've overlaid the number of passerbys, as well as the number of visitors on top of this transaction data. Right? So it kind of lets them correlate and see, OK, uh, which hours of the day have the most transactions uh, compared to the most passerbys? Is there a correlation there? How strong is that correlation? How does that correlation vary between different sites and different stores? Right? So this is, this is exciting because when we saw this, we realized that there's a lot that you can do with this. That, uh, in, in terms of basically leveraging your existing finance data, your existing point of sale data, um, and overlaying those data sets on top of each other, you're opening up new financial models and new business use cases, right? And this is something that we're seeing in more and more of our discussions now with retailers, with, with partners, even with enterprise customers, where now the operations teams and the business and marketing teams are getting involved in that enterprise IT buy, right? So that's a new trend that we're seeing. Typically, uh, in, in enterprise sales, it was usually the IT team that was making that decision, but now they're actually getting their marketing teams involved, saying, hey, how can we engage customers? They're getting their finance teams involved, saying, hey, would you guys like to see this data so that you can do your own correlation analysis, so that you can basically optimize your facility, uh, facilities so that you can optimize staffing, right? We can optimize staffing based off when people are passing by. So that, that's, that's kind of exciting because it, again, extends the kind of traditional value proposition of what was considered a IT cost center, hey, enterprise networking now, and it lets you build apps on top and it lets you derive more value from that platform. It also makes the, uh, makes the sales process more exciting because now marketing teams are getting involved in funding, funding some of these initiatives. SAML integration. So this is now sh shifting gears a little bit. Uh, this is more on the kind of corporate database management side. So uh, the kind of typical way that this was done in terms of user management was you, you needed to basically configure and create admins on dashboard.meraki.com. Um, so you would basically say, OK, Glenn is an admin. He has full access to these three sites. Sam is an admin. He has access to these other three sites. But there was no way up until recently to actually integrate with the customer identity system. So a lot, of large, a lot of large enterprises and service providers have an existing database of IT admins, hundreds of IT admins, thousands of IT admins. And that's their central repository for managing all their users. If someone gets hired or fired, they want to manage it in that central repository. So that's why we're now beta testing a new SAML-based architecture where you can basically integrate with your Active Directory identity system using SAML, and this basically allows you with that single sign-on flow, right? Um, quite exciting because it, again, um, extends the applicability of the Meraki architecture more, more into the higher-end markets um, and more of the use cases at scale. So I think we're probably going to see a very large-scale adoption of this by service providers. Um, service providers uh, like, like the guys who are doing uh, partnering with large-scale retailers for nationwide rollouts, but also with large enterprise customers that have a single, um, single identity system. If we look holistically at, at all of the APIs and interfaces, you can kind of get a sense of 
um, everything that we offer, right? Um, including a new bulk import tool where if you have a spreadsheet, you can basically have hundred, thousands of networks in that spreadsheet and upload it, including DNS and IP addresses, right? So I think this starts to hopefully paint a picture of all of the interfaces in and, out of, in, in and out of the Meraki system. And many of these tools are new. In fact, things like SNMP traps, things like bulk network import, things like the SAML login, these are, these are things that we actually have not even released yet, we're, we're, but we are beta testing them with customers and partners. We can give anyone uh, watching or anyone here ac early access to those tools, right? Um, and again, I think what's exciting here is not necessarily the specific tools, but the ability to quickly and effectively use these tools to build applications, to cut your own time to market, as well as to uh, provide value to end customers. And let's take a look at an example of this. Cloudessa. Cloudessa was a, uh, originally a radius as a cloud service provider. And they started off, and what they did was they integrated with Meraki, they integrated with the Meraki cloud using our captive portal API. And they were basically providing a, a cloud-hosted radius database with simple user management. But over time, as, as they evolved and they moved into new markets, they started to see more and more demand for additional tools. Um, so that's when they started to add things like SAML and OAuth 2.0. So they started off by adding OAuth 2.0 and they added Google Login. Then based off customer demand, they were able to add Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, PayPal Login. Uh, but, but they didn't stop there. Um, they, they added SAML Login for single sign-on with all the mainstream identity providers. But again, they, they wanted to keep going. They wanted to, they, they, they wanted to leverage the API and provide more and more services on top of that. So, that, so then they added integration with existing enterprise use, user data stores. Things like, for example, loyalty and rewards programs. Things like PMS systems for hotel management. So if you're a hotel and you want to roll out Meraki, um, like, for, like for example, the Hilton did, and you want to now have a splash page where a user can log in with their hotel room number and their name, but you don't want to necessarily deploy a kind of legacy PMS infrastructure um, or, or deploy additional hardware components on site, you can now leverage Cloudessa's basically cloud as a, the, the, the sign-on as a service platform to, to integrate with your property management system. So that's fairly exciting. And also they've uh, recently added a uh, integration with third-party MDM. We weren't thrilled about this because we do have our own MDM we've been evolving over time, but it is an open API and we want to make sure that our customers can meet whatever use cases they're looking to do. And what happened for these guys was they, they added all these tools by leveraging Meraki as a platform and uh, they were eventually acquired. So Cloudessa was recently acquired by Global Reach. Um, so fairly exciting for them because uh, Global Reach is kind of a, a large scale um, analytics and retail solutions provider company. And now they're planning on offering this um, as a platform to their end customers. So hopefully this, this starts to illustrate some of the kind of ease of use benefits of that wireless as a platform and some of the solutions and architectures that you can build around that. We've, we've managed to build a pretty rich ecosystem. Um, and this is probably an oversimplification in terms of the different categories of types of partners. But hopefully it starts to give you an idea of uh, some of the buckets, right? So we have analytics platforms, uh, companies like Euclid and Swarm and Nearby. Uh, Nearby is particularly exciting because they actually take in the CMX API as well as some additional data and they can tell a retailer if someone is, let's say, standing in your store and they're shopping on Amazon.com and they place something into their shopping cart, Nearby actually has tools where they can alert the store manager and say, hey, someone, is, someone just placed something into Amazon.com shopping cart, you should probably send your rep out to that customer and offer them a coupon in real time. Um, so this is kind of the analytics side of the house. Mobile app engagement companies, companies like Funware, July Systems, integrating with a new API. Um, July, for example, has their own very simple to use SDK that you can basically skin if you're a retailer. Um, and it lets you basically create things like wayfinding applications um, and blue dot functionality inside the mobile app quickly and effectively. And finally, captive portal providers. Um, Katie's gonna give you guys an overview of Splash Access. They've done some phenomenal stuff. And Purple Wi-Fi is a great example. Purple Wi-Fi has, uh, has a lot of rich tools for, for example, Facebook integration. So they can tell you, um, if you roll out inside a mall, they can tell you, okay, here's the demographics of uh, users in this part of the mall versus that part of the mall, right? So I think whenever we, whenever we pitch this to customers, our kind of leading pitch is always, look, Meraki has very rich interface 
Um, it's, it's completely self-contained. It's very easy to use. We have things like basic Facebook integration. We have things like cloud hosted splash pages. Um, and that's usually good enough for kind of the, the core of the market. But there is this high end of the market that is, is evolving and qu changing quickly over time. And they have richer needs. They have needs, for example, for um, analytics. They want to do real-time couponing. They want to build mobile apps. And they can either do that themselves by leveraging the API, or they can use one of these turnkey solutions partners. Right? So we don't necessarily lead by, by, by pitching these guys, we lead by pitching our own platform and our own APIs. But if, if a customer does say, this is wonderful, and I do want a mobile app, but I don't, I don't have an in-house development team, can you guys tell me how I can build that mobile app? We have partners that we, can, that we can point to. So this is exciting. And again, the universal feedback from all these partners has been that the, uh, because a lot of these partners do work with some of the other vendors in the industry as well. But the, the, the feedback almost universally has been that the Meraki platform, because it's so easy to use, because it's so easy to set up, because it's very turnkey in terms of switching things on, it's all cloud-based, a lot of these APIs come from the cloud, they were able to develop their systems and services on top of our platform the most quickly and effectively out of anyone else, as well as they're able to then go in and uh, provide value to their end customers and demo and trial and POC quickly and effectively. Because all it takes is one access point, ship it out of the customer's site. Meraki has probably the, the easiest free trial program in the industry. And then they can basically layer their services on top of that. I'm going to pass it off to uh, Katie Lane, who runs Wireless Product Marketing. And she's actually going to show you some, some real life case studies of how some of these tools have been used. As mentioned, I am the product marketing lead for the Meraki product line. And I'm going to give you a couple examples, really building off of what Raj has been talking about, uh, showing you some customers who are really using these features in their own businesses. So hopefully I can get full screen mode here. So the first one I want to talk to you about is a company called Splash Access. And this is essentially their homepage for their entire business. Uh, and you can see that Cisco Meraki is prominent on this homepage. Uh, they've essentially built their entire business based on the Meraki captive portal uh, interface. So we've been able to uh, create all of these customized captive portal for their customer. So I can go ahead and navigate oops, to their products page. You can actually take a look at some of the things that they've made. They've gone ahead and taken our captive portal interface that we've already built out and then added third-party integration onto that. So here's just a few examples of some of the things they've done. Here's one for a coffee shop, where they've been able to integrate this with, for instance, MailChimp Chimp for email marketing campaigns. So they can have the customer easily set up this splash page and then create automated email marketing campaigns without having to actually do anything on the customer end. All of this is already available in the Meraki platform. Uh, they've also been able to integrate video marketing campaigns. So it, where, based on the location of that customer as they're logging in, they can target that customer with specific ads. So they've been able to integrate all of these third-party tools into this business. Uh, so you might be wondering, uh, why is this entire business built around Cisco Meraki, and why did they choose Meraki? There's a lot of companies that could do the same thing. And it's really uh, based on what Raj was talking about, just the ease of use of the platform. They've been able to really easily uh, speed their business process, their sales process, do really quick POCs, and get their sales team up and running with Meraki uh, very quickly and get other customers going on the platform as well. The next one I'm going to talk to you about is actually uh, one of our MSP customers. I'm going to go ahead and log back in here. So this customer is Arkiva. Arkiva is an MSP in the UK. And this is actually their own customized branded dashboard page. Uh, so Arkiva manages networks for a number of organizations, retailers, uh, public access like airports, and also hospitality customers. You can see on the right here, we're actually looking at 141 different networks that you can access from this dashboard page. And each one of these customers has their own customized experience in the dashboard that Arkiva has created for them. 
So as they log into the dashboard, they can have a complete experience that ties into whatever the systems Arkiva has envisioned for that customer. If I click on this branding tab, we can see how we can create specific policies around uh, what the type of customer is. So here I can create a new policy. And for instance, I can name this tourism. I can apply this policy to any of my tourism companies. I can select which networks I want them to have access to for all of their administrators. And then I can customize the entire user experience here. I can see uh, if they want to have access to the help tab or not. Here I can completely customize the support contact info. So instead of contacting Rocky support, now they're reaching out to Arkiva support. Here they can enter their own customized HTML markup and the experience is seamless from the customer's end. They never see Rocky, they are interacting completely with Arkiva. So this is a really powerful tool for MSPs. Uh, we've built out this entire platform in the back end. MSPs simply have to get their customers started on Meraki and can add their networks into the system with fully functional feature set without having to build that out on their end. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you about is actually uh, relating to the SAML discussion that Raj was talking to you about earlier. So SAML is security uh, accessible or extensible markup uh, language. So this is a protocol that is used to allow the identity, uh, identity provider to communicate with the dashboard in this case. So I've logged into this dashboard network to demo you the SAML configuration. I'm simply in our organization and settings tab. And all I have to do is enable SAML configuration and from here, I can customize the login experience for users who are logging in from the identity provider into the Meraki dashboard. So an example would be, as Raj mentioned, say you have a whole list of administrators on your own uh, identity provider already, and you don't want to have to manage an entire set of users on the dashboard as well. So we can integrate the Active Directory login with the dashboard and streamline the flow of your experience moving from that website, the customer's website, into the dashboard and then back out again. So what these settings are, this is where you would enter the customer URL into the customer's website. And then here we're entering the SLO logout. This is where you're gonna be dropped as soon as you log out of the dashboard. And this is essentially the trust settings for allowing the communication from the identity platform into the dashboard. So I can go into the Administrators tab, Administrators tab, and you'll see all of our regular administrators, but now I have this whole section for SAML administrator roles. So I can create a new role, and maybe I want to have a specific role just for marketing team. Thank you so much. So I can create privileges for this specific group of users, and these are integrated into those Active Directory user groups. And for our marketing team, for instance, maybe we only want them to have access to our monitoring information. So they're only going to see analytics data that's available in the dashboard. So I can create an administrator for these users. And now I can go and log in. Whoops. All right. So I can go ahead and log in uh, to the dashboard from this demo website that we've set up. So we made just a uh, fake website, essentially. And this is just to demonstrate what the process would look like if you are a TWC user and you were wanting to log into the dashboard and then come back out again. So I'm already logged in with my 802.1x credentials and I can sign in here using my TWC credentials and I'm dropped directly into a customized dashboard page. The flow is extremely seamless. I don't have to log into the dashboard separately and as soon as I log out again, I'm brought straight back into that website. So this again is really, really powerful. You can completely streamline the process uh, for each of these customers. And also it streamlines the management process for the administrators so you don't have to remember to remove dashboard credentials if someone were to leave the company. All right, I have one more to demo. 
Tracy. So Raj had mentioned how we had extended the CMX API. Uh, we've had this API for quite a while since we launched the product, but we've recently added a bunch of functionality around location. And we built out this, uh, this use case of the API just as an example, and we're actually going to make it completely open source so that customers can use this and actually build on top of it as well. So what we're looking at right now is actually a map of the building that we're in right now. If I log out, you can really easily see that we're in San Francisco. And as I log back in, you can actually see all of the information that CMX is picking up from the Wi-Fi devices in this building. So all of these are individual Wi-Fi clients that are probing to connect to the network. If I click on one of these, I can decide to follow this client. And now I can actually get information just for this one specific client as it moves around, like a breadcrumb trail of watching a customer move around a store. Can you do a replay on that? I'm sorry? Can you do replay on that? So you came in halfway through their, their session and you wanted to see where they've been through the store already? So all this is being uh, exported. So if you have the data exported before, uh, then you'd be able to grab that data. Does that make sense? Yep. What's going to happen with the iOS 8? Because, you know, testing this with iOS 8, especially in my house, it ramps up to 500 devices pretty quickly with just two iOS 8 devices in there. How are you going to try to figure out how to not mess up your data and have oversampling and too many? Yeah, so Blake's question is how, is how are some of the Mac randomization changes in iOS 8 going to impact some of the sanity of this data set? I think we're still studying that. Um, the iOS 8 seed, I think, th two or three, shows the randomization happening once every hour. So, uh, I mean, th th there's, a, there's a range of scenarios. One range of the scenario is on the most extreme end, we'll just filter out any iOS 8 devices because their local bit will be set in their Mac. And that way you'll get this data for all associated clients as well as unassociated clients minus iOS 8 devices. Um, but in the scenario where they're randomizing, let's say, once every hour, you can still do this kind of analysis uh, based off that randomization occurring once every hour. So. Great. Um, so just one last thing on, on this API demo that we've built. You can actually get a complete dump of all the data that we're looking at. If I type in clients, you can actually see exactly what we're looking at here. And this is beautiful to look at, but you can kind of see exactly the, the data that Raj was talking about. Here's our lat launch information. You can also see the floor, if we've imported floor plans, I know which floor the device is on, and I can also get the XY coordinates. So we're able, we're making this code available uh, so that other customers can build on top of it for their own use cases.